In this set of problems, we're going to calculate the future value of a present value. So the payments, the PMT, is going to be zero for each of these problems. All right, so we start with the first one. Bill put $1,000 into a savings account that has a 5% rate. How much in his account after one year? All right, the money he put into the account today, he took $1,000 out of his pocket. And I'm going to make that a negative. He has a 5% annual interest rate means it compounds once a year. After one year, how much will he have in the account? The payments are zero, so equals FV open parents, and then click on the FX up here. The rate, 5%, the number of periods, 1, the payment, C12, present value, C10, hit the go button, and there's my answer, $1,050. You could have done that one in your head, 5% of $1,000 is 50 bucks. So how much will be in your account after one year? The original 1,000 you put in there plus 50 bucks of interest. It starts getting complicated when you compound interest because in the second year, you're gonna earn another 5%, that'll be another $50. But you're also going to earn 5% on the $50 of interest you've already earned. So you're going to get more than 50 the next year and then each year after that. So that's what they call the magic of compounding. Now again, because we set this thing up using cell references, all I have to do is change the N on each of these. And we can see that your $1,000 at 5% interest would be $131,000 after 100 years. All right, that's how rich people stay rich. They keep that money and hang on to it for a long time. All right, if Bill could earn a higher interest rate at 8% after one year, five years, and 100 years, I can actually copy all of this. over to here and the only thing that changes in the second set of problems is this is 8% for each of them and we can see when you see that crosshatch there it means the number is too big to fit into the space allocated so just make the column a little wider and you can see that at 8% at 5% your thousand dollars would be $131,000 $130,000 at 8%, 3% higher, that's not much higher, you'd actually have $2.2 million. That's a pretty big difference, isn't it? All right. Not that much difference after one year, $80 of interest instead of $50 interest, but the more periods you compound because you're earning interest on the interest, the wider the discrepancy. All right. Denise has just received a gift from her grandmother at $10,000 just received. That's time zero. She decides to save the money so she can spend it 10 years from now. She has a lot of investment choices. The bank earning 5, an investment account earning 8, a mutual fund earning 12. She instinctively knows that a higher rate of return the more money, but she wants to know, she wants to be able to quantify it. Okay, we can do that. Take $10,000 out of your wallet, and that's the grandma money, for 10 years at 5, 8, or 12 percent. So at 5 percent, I'm going to cheat again, just go on up here and copy these down. Again, if you're using cell references, that's the fastest way to do it. Because Excel will simply look If it's, if it's looking for the interest rate, it looks up two rows. If it's looking for the number of periods, it looks up three rows. If it looks for the present value, it looks up one row. If it's looking for the payment, it's looking down one row. All right? So they're all going to be 10 years from now. That one at 8% and that one at 12%. Okay, so you about double your money. 
if you go from 5% to 12%. Alright, that's not bad. If you deposit $1,000 in a savings account, it pays 10% annual interest, compounded annually, how much after one year? 10% compounded quarterly, monthly, daily, every 60 seconds. Alright, I'm going to copy all this down and just modify the, the, the number of periods, rate, PV, and payment cell. Alright, that's going to be zero for all of them. So you're going to take $1,000 and put it into savings. Pays 10% annual interest, compounded once a year. Now what that means is, if you go look at your check in at your bank account, your savings account, 280 days from now, it'll still just have a thousand dollars in it. 360 days, it'll still have a thousand dollars in it. 364 days, it'll have a thousand dollars. 365 days, they'll credit you the interest. All right, so after one year, you'd have a hundred dollars of interest. If it's 10% annual interest compounded quarterly, that means that after three months, they pay you interest. There are four quarters in a year, so I'll take the when I'm setting the number of periods, it's still one year, but quarterly is times four. And if it's 10%, that's 10% divided by four. So that's the interest rate that you earn every three months. You do that four times a year, you'll have 10% total. All right, if we went monthly, it would be one year with 12 compounding periods, and it'd be 10% divided by 12. Notice that the amount that you have keeps getting slightly higher, even though the nominal interest rate continues to be 10, 10%. 10 so daily it's 365, and then we take 10% divided by 365, and the actual interest rate it's using goes out to 13 decimal places. Okay, so it's only showing the two, that's formatting. It's not, it's actually using the real number. And then if we do it for every second, that'd be equals one, and then there are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. And then the interest rate would be 10% divided by 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes in an hour times 24 hours in a day times 365 days in a year. Notice that going from daily to every second didn't add very much to the total value. So you get a increase when you start compounding more often than once a year, but it increases at a decreasing rate. So if we were to graph this, you can see it goes up sharply going from one compounding period to four, and then it goes up some more going from four to 12. 12 times a year, 12 times a year to 365, very little change. And then going from daily to every second, very little change from there. So, and eventually it stops rising altogether because it gets infinitesimally small. All right. And let's go to the last one. Kelly has decided to save her tax refund of $1,000 and has got three different CDs from the bank. CDA, CDB, and CDC. All right. She's going to put $1,000 into the bank. I just copy all this down so I can change what needs changing. It's a thousand dollar tax refund, so don't have to change that. CDA pays five percent annual interest compounded annually, so she'll have a thousand fifty dollars. The second CD offers four point nine percent compounded monthly. 
divide that by 12, multiply that by 12. I'll go ahead and show some more decimal points here. Notice that she has more, not much more, but CDB, even though it's only paying 4.9% interest, she ends up with 12 cents more. Oh, it's only 12 cents. Well, you know, 12 cents is 12 cents more than zero. CDC pays 4.85 compounded daily. So I take 4.85% divided by 365. And notice that the 485 compounded daily doesn't earn as much as the 490 compounded monthly, but the 490 compounded monthly is more than 5% compounded annually. You're faced with choices like this all the time, and it might be more than a thousand. So you want to find the one that generates the, the most money. That's just, I hate to say common sense, but that's common sense.